We're back for another exciting episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat, brought to you by Bespoke Post. And Jamie's got the reins on this one since I was out of town. Monday morning, it's just me and Ray right now, but luckily Eric left us all of our filming equipment, right? You got the red camera. Okay, there it is. That's it, folks. That's how it happens right here, YouTube on the red camera. So um, he said we're supposed to like film everything, right? Yeah. So I think it's just me and you today. So you film me on yours and then I'll film you on this. Okay, okay. No, that could work out great. I'm sure we're gonna get some really good stuff. Yeah. Next up, we got a roof out. This porch right here, the little uh, low slope and then get on up to the steep part. And then last we'll do the dormer. And so that we have a platform sort of built all the way around it that we can stand on and work from and be able to hand material up. And, and the wall, that little wall surface right there, we're gonna leave that undone until very last because we can pass material in and out of that wall. It'd be silly to block it off right away. All right, in as few words as possible, here goes. These blocks are supporting the overhang. They're only 12 inches long. And so to me, that's reasonable to cantilever these things out. Now, the plywood's pretty stiff. We're using this 5 8 zip board. And I tell you what, it has quite a bit of strength in it. And it is also gonna add some structure to this part that is overhanging here. It's gonna help hold it from sagging and things like that. So I don't have any concern about a 12 inch overhang. If you went greater than that, like 16, 24, this method is not gonna work. It's gonna, eventually it's gonna sag. You would need to have ties running back to your next rafter back. And that's what we do when we have larger overhangs. So for this, it's great. For something bigger, not great. You seem to always have a lot to say about stuff. I know, that's the problem. <laughs> and Eric's not here, so I could just talk all day. Yeah. Right here where this overhang intersects the main roof, we did something we normally do, which is leave a gap. It's kind of maybe hard to see. There we go. So we leave that gap on purpose so the shingles can actually slide in all the way up under there. And, you know, instead of putting like a, like an L-shaped piece of step flashing here, the shingles will actually just run through and through as if that piece doesn't exist. And that's a really good way to keep leaks out of this area because this is a very prone area to have a leak if, if somebody does it improperly. And we just temporarily put a scrap of the roof surface here so that we know how much space. I left about a half inch. You could even leave more if you want. Uh, the finished fascia material will come in and also be spaced off of the roof um, so that it doesn't rot as well. about a two inch wide gap here and that's on purpose to let the air from the soffit vents actually flow out of the roof and allow hot air to escape uh, but for now we're going to cover it with tape why are we doing that ray so the water doesn't get in there that's right we don't want it to be like raining in here the whole time we're waiting you know for the shingles to get put on so we'll cover it temporarily now this is kind of wide for a regular roll of zip tape but we're in luck what you got there mega roll zip tape mega is that what it's called uh, I think I made mega roll. We're gonna that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. Mega roll. This is like I don't know, eight inches wide. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't even know this existed till like today. Where'd and uh here it is. Mega roll zip tape. We're gonna stick it over the ridge. Be awesome. Let's do it. I'm not sure why, but the mega roll has a backing on the uh sticky side there. I guess uh it needs it for some reason, but it's coming mm -hmm. off and uh Getting it stuck on here. Oh, I just messed that spot up. Don't tell anybody. What is this? What is that? 
Now these little pieces sticking up, they're just blocks. And you're gonna see why they are so important for us right now. We're gonna plywood this little strip, but if you didn't know, putting a piece of plywood that narrow, we're talking that's maybe 10 inches wide, is not a great idea by itself because it can be really bouncy. And if you, I mean, if you stepped on it hard enough, you could break it and fall through the roof. So what we're doing here is putting in solid blocking here, two by 10 blocking in between every one of these. And that gives us an awesome, like rigid backing uh, for that. Do you know why we did this? No. Okay, well, we probably didn't tell you. But the real reason is so that our ridge cap shingles run continuous all the way down, okay? If, if this low pitch roof came up and met at the very top, then we'd have this weird little flap step looking weird wacky thing. Leak. And I've done it. I did it, I did it on my own house and I, and I was like, man, this is terrible. <laughs> so from now on, we make the uh, extension of the ridge actually right there and it, it really works out nice. It looks good too. It looks so good actually. Awesome. I mean, you won't be able to see it. I don't think you'll be able to see it from anywhere, but I know it looks good. What do you got for lunch there? Well, I got some chicken salad today. Yeah. Look at that. Now, it's pretty good like that, but really what it needs hot sauce okay uh, that it needs that much hot sauce right, hang on, we're doing it. Oh, it's just not done. Mm. Oh, it's just, um. I think you're gonna need another bottle there we go perfect <laughs> let's take a quick break from our video to thank our sponsor bespoke post which is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands and it's free to join. And over the COVID-19 crisis, Bespoke Post has purchased over $47 million of products for their boxes from small businesses here in the U.S. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and even more based on a preference quiz that you fill out. And their box lineup is constantly changing every month so you can always discover something new. And Bespoke Post lets you preview your box before it's shipped so you can decide if you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay what you want, and you can also cancel the subscription at any time. I've really enjoyed treating myself with my last three boxes, which were the On Tap, a stainless steel growler, the Weekender, an awesome heirloom carry-all, and the Forge Knife with a leather holster. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up using the link shown here in the screen or in the description, and use promo code PERKINS20 at checkout. And thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Now that all the plywood is on the roof, is on the exterior walls, basically there is no need for our temporary diagonal bracing. So we had diagonal braces on every part of this house that didn't have plywood, holding everything plumb and vertical and in place while the plywood and the frame of the structure was being built and it was doing its job of holding everything in position. So now that the plywood is done, we don't need that anymore. It's not doing anything or adding any additional strength. We're gonna remove all these braces. We're gonna take all that material and we're gonna cut it up into different things that we need for uh, other little wall you know, segments that need built. We've got some random framing, blocking. All that material is gonna get used up somewhere in this house. All righty, Ray. Well, y'all did a great job getting these walls plywooded. These are not the easiest walls to plywood because they have a bunch of wacky angles. And uh, I wanna point out this really awesome looking blocking, I guess, backing. Just scrap pieces of plywood. And yeah, I know they're randomly placed, but guess what, it doesn't matter. The only purpose of that is to give this bottom edge of the wall plywood outside a little bit more rigidity. Uh, like if you're putting on step flashing for the shingles, just to have it stiffened up a little bit more in between the stud bays. And the reason we use plywood is because it's thin and we're using high density R15 fiberglass insulation in these walls. And guess what? It doesn't compress much. And so when you put it over like a two by four blocking, which we do sometimes, uh, it can actually push out a little bit and, and push a little bulge in the drywall. So we try to keep it nice and slim. And that, that blocking is not even necessary or required, but we just want to add a little something. All right, so big picture, plywood's done. Really the whole place. We can go home? No, you can't go home. 
I mean, I'd like to go home too, but dang. Hey boss. Well, we actually have a lot of walls to build in here. So here's the deal. Chug a lug. <laughs> let, me, let me give you a quick rundown about these walls that we got to build. No? I don't care. Oh, okay. Sweet. All right. Well, there are people that care. There's people that care. So I'm going to... Oh, you're telling people, and, not just Yeah, people. no, no, not just you. Okay. It's people all over the world. They want to know about these walls. And uh, again, Eric's not here to stop me from talking. So guess what? Roll it. Let it rain. All right. So we're going to build a little knee wall here. This is going to block off the side of the stairwell and make a little attic space there. We have a little door already framed. It might get boxed down a little smaller, but that's one thing. There's that. Uh, the height of the knee wall, we'll call it, is 54 inches from the subfloor. And we like to build those so that our handrail coming around here can butt into something vertical surface and not butt into the pitch of the slope of the bottom edge of the roof because it can get a little quirky. Um, to match that, we're going to duplicate that height over here on this other side. And we have a nominal five foot high knee wall to build. We're going to make it 54 to match the other side so that you can put a couch up against the wall and you don't run and bang your head into these rafters here. So down the whole length, five foot knee wall, and then boom, stop there, stagger out because we've got a bathroom in this end. You're going to walk through the door right here where I'm standing. Door's going to open, be a shower to the right, a little divider wall, sink, and a toilet. So, you know, none of that exists now, guys. So we gotta build it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Enter the bathroom. We've got a nice tall wall here. I wanna point out, we did some horizontal fire blocking here because this stud bay is taller than 10 feet so you have to have a break for the uh, airflow for fire code here we have the shower now this is going to be low on this on this bottom edge and uh, we're kind of shimmying we have very little space to fit this shower in so once the plumber gets here we'll kind of work out the nitty-gritty of the details there and then i got some junk in the way here some ladders but basically there'll be a sink and toilet right there. Um, some pretty fun framing in here. Everything is angle cut. Everything is plumbed up with a level. Lots of bevel rips. Um, I kind of enjoy this kind of framing though, really. Actually, it's kind of fun. Lots of nailers everywhere. Um, used up a lot of scrap wood, shorter pieces, leftover pieces, and made something pretty cool. Oh yeah, we got muscles on, on duty here. Here's the windows. And just like everything that you order, there's going to be something messed up. I guarantee it. Cabinets, windows, whatever. Something's going to be bent, broken, smashed. And we got one window with a cracked piece of glass right there. Luckily, though, the guy said it's on the moving piece, the uh, the sash, the, uh, the non-fixed panel. You know, because if it was on the fixed panel uh, to replace that, it could have been a real pain. Yeah, new. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Oh no, he did. He did. I did. I did. Double pain. A double pain. Could be. Are these triple pain windows? I don't know. A pain in the glass. Pain in the glass. Oh. You, <laughs> well, you, you can't thought say I was, that on You thought I was gonna say it. <laughs> it's a pain in the glass. Yeah. Well, right. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, no, no. It's, Carrying in a whole house full of windows. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's, it's, Thursday. it's Thursday. What is it called? No, what? Thursday. 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 No, it's Thursday. Friday. Friday. Thursday. Friday. Friday. Thursday. 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 I love it. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed seeing part of what I missed while I was on vacation. And Jamie and the guys did a great job making this video. So if you've enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. It helps YouTube know we're making great content here. Thanks. We'll see you next time.